this is what it means. Everything in these, these new campers, they have an electric component. So this is a normal RV toilet. You step on the foot valve, you know, you open the thing, you know, that's your toilet. It goes down into the uh, black tank. So, what they're doing a lot, making fancy, they give you a toilet with no flush. It's all electronic. So now, 12 volt toilets. This one incorporates a macerator. So you got a control panel with its little circuit board in it. Then you have a controller that controls everything else based on the control panel inputs. I'm not the first one to work on this. I'm kind of going behind somebody else. That happens a lot in this business. A lot of people can't work on this stuff. Um, they're not used to it. So this is where you want to start at. This thing's not working. Find a controller, start there. You don't gotta go pull it up the toilet or nothing. Some, sometimes on the vacuum flushes, this controller box is in back in there to space in between that wall. So now I gotta go get all the electrical gear and start troubleshooting this stuff electronically and to add another monkey wrench into play. So you have an electric toilet that has its own controller and its own touchpad. But all of that is gonna be controlled by a logic control system, like a touch screen that's working off of this thing. So now you're not only dealing with low voltage, 12 volts, but now you got to add in CAN bus networks and things like that. So working on an RV is, is not like what it was for your, your dad or granddad. They're uh, a lot more complicated now and uh, there's a lot more that goes into it. You got all this stuff to make a toilet work, all right? All right, so for this job, we're getting the Vito TP double XL bag, which is my electrical bag. Uh, I'm pretty sure I have not done a loadout for you guys on this one, but uh, we're not about to do one now. I got my fluke meter tied off to that bag. Got two meter pouches on this bag. It's quite heavy because I have it super loaded. Got electrical test leads and stuff in the back. I'm gonna go inside and see what it's gonna take to get this toilet working. That's the wet bay. The black tank is in there. I've already been looking in there because the customer also stated they had an issue with the macerator pump even before the last shop ruin the electronics that allow the toilet to flush. All right guys, so here's my setup. Got my electrical bag on the counter, my bits and kits. Of course, I had to remove panels using the blue point set here. These bits are pretty good, except the, uh, the number two Phillips. I have ordered a snap-on to replace that, and I have replaced the number one square with a snap-on. The number two Phillips, it's not shaped properly. It doesn't make good fitment with a number two Phillips screw and it slips. And you don't want that to happen when you're working on something and it slips and you mar a uh, adjacent surface because then you get to buy that. So um, I ordered another one and I have some other bits. These I got off of Amazon and the Phillips fit very well on these uh, Pro Torques. Okay, so yeah, I got my stuff set up. I got my bags out. Um, I have another bag that I need to get out of the truck that has like a, a lot of back probing connectors and whatnot. So I'm gonna start testing this system 
to see, uh, first of all, do I have power even coming into my main controller? Because this main controller, as you can see, it has a water pump that it controls, solenoid valve, the macerator pump, and the control or panel, which is pretty important because it lets it know when the tank is full. So if I don't have power here, it's no need for me to go looking for the macerator pump to see if it's not working. The customer says it's not working, but I need to go to the source. And this is, uh, I'm using the half split method that they taught us in the Air Force. I was an electronic specialist. We were taught to solve electrical issues with the half split method. You go to the halfway point of your circuit. So the beginning point would be the source of the 12 volts, the uh, DC breaker panel. And the end point would be the uh, macerator pump. The midway point for me is going to be this controller. It's in between that PDU and that pump itself. So I'm gonna start here first. All right, so I don't have proper voltage. I got low voltage. I had to switch out, of course, to the, the very fine point leads on here because the, uh, the regular fluke leads with that cat rating, it, the plastic gets in the way. So uh, I used my back probing lead. I was only getting like 2 point, let's go to it, turn my light on. I was only getting like two volts, two and a half volts. It's about two and a half volts. And I've seen this with these logic control systems before. Sometimes I can reset the logic control system and the whole thing just resets and it starts sending a proper voltage. Anyway, took the toilet out. The macerator pump is in here. So uh, there's no hole in the floor like you normally would have. What you have is when you want to get rid of the waste, it comes through that big pipe there, goes through that guy on the bottom, that's the pump, and then it shoots it up through the P-trap and down the plumbing. So that's how these things work. There's a solenoid valve in there too, and that's, that's a part of the equation as well. Now, all that's controlled by this controller, and the controller's controlled by logic control. So next step from here, before we even worry about the pump, and the solenoid, because they're both, there it is, you can see the, the red and black wires back there. That's the uh, macerator. It's all controlled by this, which is controlled by logic control. We got to find these two wires, these two brown wires, which power this controller. It should have battery voltage there. It's 10 gauge wire. It's supposed to be more than 2.4 volts. So I got to find out what's mitigating my voltage and correct that issue and then I can come back and see if the system works with full voltage. Electronics don't like low voltage. They don't operate well. So I gotta get the voltage right and then I'll be back. In the meanwhile, the next real step is you wanna pull schematics for the stuff. You know, you, you work on electronics, you gotta have schematics. You wanna pull whatever service manuals and schematics you can find that tells you, hey, I'm supposed to have uh, two 0.5 or 5 volt reference for my control valve because you don't want to go sit in 12 volt places that ain't supposed to get 12 volts. But my input voltage should be 12.4 to 13.6 going into the controller. And you want to know what your inputs and your outputs are. So that's where the schematics come in. So that's when you got to uh, start looking up the, uh, the Sandy Martin folks and see if you can find some information on their controller. Uh, see if this thing has a uh, part number on it. That might be it. That's the only number on it. And uh, also what I'll be doing is, this is really messy. It's very sloppy. I don't know if that's from the original manufacturer, which is quite possible, or, oh, sorry guys, from a previous technician that's worked on it, but there's a lot of frayed wires sticking out of this thing. And that is, no bueno. 
So I'll be probably taking all of those out and installing ferrules. In a situation like that, you need to have a uh, you need to have a bootlace ferrule on that to take those stranded wires and make it to one solid connection, so you don't have to worry about that. So uh, I'll be installing ferrules on those. Another thing I like to do, guys, especially when I'm trying to trace out lines and I don't know where they are, if it gets to a point like tonight, I can't get a hold of Thor. I have some contacts at Thor to where I can uh, uh, contact some of the engineers i i have uh contacts in their engineering department and they'll send me the schematics for this but it's too late in the day for that so uh one thing i like to do also is i want to since i have to put ferrules on these anyway because i want to because it's it's messy and needs to be cleaned up i gotta uh i want to test the voltages while this is disconnected from this device to rule out that i have a uh a short or something in this device so what i want to do is i want to take the main power and disconnect it from this uh control box before i go any further and uh talking about the right tool for the job i went and grabbed this snap on i put a uh, number one i think that's a number one fill up in there but the shaft it's it's too big so i need these so i uh, this is uh, a recent purchase for these uh, instinct screwdrivers. And I can tell where someone has used the wrong driver in it already. And I can see where the uh, they have deformed the inside of the screw head on that brown wire by using the wrong screwdriver. So I definitely don't wanna do that. I'm gonna use the right one, get them out. And it's gonna be these little guys they fit right in there and I can instinct handle is great it was in there pretty tight you can loosen that up take that up enough to where I can remove this wire and that's my hot side I'll do the same thing to the negative I'll pull all the rest of them out one by one put ferrules on them and I'll put this thing back together all right so I got those out I used the right tool, which was a number one, but on this number one, the shaft is uh, slimmer than on that ratcheting screwdriver, which is bigger, and the bit is much bigger, even though the tip is uh, supposed to be the same, and got it out without incident. So, what would have happened if I continued to use the wrong tool on this? and galled up that fastener because it's happened. Someone has done it on the solar controller outside. I had to replace it because these screws you cannot replace. And in that solar controller, same thing. They used the wrong thing. They got it out and they went to put it back in. It was so stripped out. They couldn't tighten it down anymore and the wires was loose and it was shorting out the system. When I came behind them and I had to diagnose it and found that that's the problem, the loose connection, which causes all type of heat and stuff, well, I called the engineers and, and they confirmed it. They was like, no, nah, Tim, if, if that faster and that type of equipment is messed up, you have to replace the whole device. And that's what I had to do. So I wasn't just being cheeky in uh, the other video when I was saying like, listen, you gotta get the right tools for the job. It doesn't matter how much it costs. Uh, if you're in this line of business, I mean, you gotta get the right tools, right? And I want the tools that's gonna give me the best chance of getting it out. And a lot of times fitment matters when it comes to certain tools. And this is uh, one of those cases. So somebody has already started to gall those up. Of course, I use the right tool, so it didn't get any worse. I'm gonna be able to get these all out and back in correctly. So now let's see what we have. Because the reason I like to take this out, particularly this is the feed. I measured this, I was only getting, as you saw, the. Uh, two started off at three dropped down to two point something volts and my next step would have been to go find out where the source is because i'm getting low voltage but i know from experience that that device can cause that voltage can drop if we have an internal short or something in here and i don't have to look any further so i want to test the voltage while it's out and not connected to that box and let's see what we got 
Look at there, I got battery voltage. That's what I'm supposed to have there. So what that tells me is I don't have to go running all around the camper searching for other things. My problem is right in here. It's either in this device or something connected to this device has some type of a short or malfunction and it's shorting out this box. It's not even letting my input voltage stay to where it needs to be. I'm still gonna grab the service manuals and look at what my inputs and outputs should be, but that's a big find right there, knowing that I don't have to go finding the source for this. The half split method has proven itself again. Right at the halfway point, I see my problem. So now I'm gonna troubleshoot this box by simply, without having any other schematics, I can simply disconnect each device one at a time and see, since I have to take them off anyway because the wires are all messed up and frayed and they need ferrules on them. And when I get to a point to where I take something off and my voltage goes back up, I know that's the, that's the circuit that has a problem. And that's, that's kind of how I, I do troubleshooting, especially when I don't have the schematics and stuff at hand. I call it the old school way. That's, that's kind of you know how I do my old school troubleshooting when I don't have the schematics. And I just gotta, gotta figure it out. So since the customer did complain about the macerator was progressively getting noisier and whatnot, I'm gonna start with taking that one loose. And, and you see what has been done here? They couldn't fit all of the strands in, so they just shoved it in there. Either they could have loosened the screw a little more, or if it can't fit, that's when you gotta put a ferrule on there. So uh, I'm gonna clean this up uh, before I put it back in. And I got my wires protected with Wagos. I'm gonna hook these back up and see if I maintain my 13 volts with the macerator pump disconnected. All right, so before I go any further, I'll let you know that when I, let's see if I can get these to kind of stay in here. After I moved everything one by one, yeah, it's not gonna stay in there, I'm gonna have to one hand it. And I put my leads in, I'm still, as soon as it gets connected to the control panel, uh, the as soon as it gets connected to the controller with nothing else connected to it because I had to I disconnected everything it's still only getting uh, the two volts so my voltage drops as soon as as soon as it hits this control box my voltage drops and uh, I, I got to pull schematics now to see is that supposed to happen is my voltage supposed to disappear as soon as it touches the controller? Normally that, that'd be a no, but be sure. Hey, hey, I gotta find out. All right, so still troubleshooting in the blind, meaning I don't have my schematics and stuff, and you're not gonna always be able to get them sometimes. So uh, I'm doing old school, doing it my way. So, Whenever I connect the coach power, when it's disconnected, I get a strong 13.6 volts. But when I connect it to the control box, the voltage drops down to two. So I thought my problem is probably gonna be in here because that shouldn't happen, but I don't have the schematics, I couldn't verify. But when I went to test my macerator pump, because this thing was full of water, and if I give power to the macerator, it'll pump the water out, which I did. Um, when I put the load on that circuit, the voltage dropped off, it, it couldn't handle the load. So there is a problem with that circuit. I'm gonna have to still troubleshoot that circuit. But before I did, I said, like, well, I'm gonna use my 12 volt power supply, which today is this 12 volt DeWalt battery. I might've shared that before, one of my ProTech tips. You can use your 12 volt DeWalt batteries out of the power supply. And when I use my rig, I have different connectors like these, a whole bag of them, all different kinds, alligator clips. So I use the alligator clips clipped onto the macerator wires, which is the black and the red. Went to my battery, which will say B plus and B minus, and my pump engaged. So I was like, well, now I'm gonna test this box 
and when I put my uh, power on here, my battery is sitting at 11.6. It's not dropping any voltage. So there's nothing wrong with the box. There's something wrong with the circuit. So a little troubleshooting steps like that, even when you don't have a schematic, it's preferred to have a uh, wiring diagram schematic for the coach, but it's not always possible. You gotta know how to kind of do stuff a different way to find out without tearing up stuff, right? So I know that the nominal voltage of my battery right now, I'll just disconnect these. I'm using a uh, double banana jacks which are really nice because they allow you to uh, do two things. You know, I can test with my meter on one side of the jacks and then I can use the other side to go into some leads. So right now I've disconnected the double banana jacks from the Santa Marin control box and my voltage. I'm just measuring what's connected and it's still 11.6, it didn't budge. So I believe that this guy is good. Now I got to find out why when I connect the circuit for the, the input, the 12 volt main power, when it hits the box, when it hits any kind of a load, the voltage drops off. So I'll be troubleshooting that, paying heavy attention to the neutral side. So here's that scenario so you guys can see it. I already know what's going on, but just uh, so you guys can see it in action, I have my uh, double banana jacks connected to the meter and to these fluke alligator hooks. And on one end, I have it going to the main power, positive and negative. And now I'm going to positive and negative for the macerator pump. On my battery, independent power source, this worked. But well, see, look, look what happens to the meter when I grab it. The meter shorts all the way out under the load, takes it all the way out. As soon as I release it from the circuit with the load on it, it goes back up almost to 14 volts. So I definitely have a problem with the circuit. I gotta run down the circuit. It's getting late. I gotta uh, start putting some of the stuff up because I got a lot of other jobs. And uh, I knew this was, these could be some pretty involved electrical diagnostics. Uh, and it's kind of dirty messing with the toilet and stuff, especially if you had the removed macerator pump and uh, they're not all right at the toilet. A lot of them are at the exit of the tank. I didn't know which kind this was until I got it. I like to be able to go in the house and take a shower after I get soiled. So uh, that's why I had to have this brought here and I, wouldn't, I won't do these jobs in the field. I need them here uh, so that I can spend the time that I need. And if I get messed up, I can go and take a quick shower and get cleaned up without freaking out because I'm not getting in my truck like that. I have a hazmat suit that I have, but I charge like, if I gotta put that on to work on your camper because I'm guaranteed to get covered in your feces, it's an $800 charge for that. And a lot of people don't wanna pay that. So uh, it's easier for them just to bring it to the house. I'll work on it here and uh, where I can take a shower. All right guys, so packing it up for the day. That's it. I'll try to get up with my engineering contacts over at Thor tomorrow to find out where this circuit originates from, what's the source from it, so I can go check that next and see if my, uh, and, and see why my power is dropping off uh, from there. I do have one other test that I could do. I have to find another uh, 12 volt circuit with a good neutral and a good hot and I want to mainly focus on the I keep saying neutral but I mean the negative neutral of course is on 110 not 12 volts but I want to find a good negative 12 volt DC and I want to connect my test up again and see if it falls out so I can I need to find out is it the neutral circuit or is it the hot circuit so I want to uh, definitely want to do that and then I still have to find out where this comes from so I can uh, solve the problem at the source. But I like to know, to minimize it down as much as I can. These were the weapons of choice today. We had the uh, double banana jacks and an assortment of uh, electrical connectors. We had that new snap-on kit that I got with the small screwdrivers. 
in it. This is the one that I use, the number, uh, the number one Phillips to work on this box. I use my snap-on tray to hold all the loose screws. I put the stopper in there because I'm taking this all and then I didn't want to lose my screws, so I put them in the sink. And then I use some of my different connectors. Uh, these, I believe, are Groupon brand, got off of Amazon. These connectors to uh, spade into my DeWalt 12 volt battery. These to clip on to the raw wires. And these very fine tip, but very stout piercing uh, probes, back probes, along with my fluke meter made easy work of what I had to do. So I wasn't all frustrated. I had all the right tools at my disposal to do the job with and less stress, less frustration makes for an easier diagnostic uh, service, especially when you don't have all the uh, information that you need like the schematics, all right? Thank you.